Hello everyone, I am Dr. Trupti and today's video is about fructose metabolism and associated disorders. In this video, we will also see one case study on hereditary fructose intolerance and we will justify why fructose is harmless in diabetes is a myth, it is not a reality. Fructose is a monosaccharide and it is a keto sugar. We get fructose through various dietary sources like sucrose, cane sugar, honey, fr fruits. So these are the richest sources of fructose. Once it is digested and absorbed, the entry of this fructose in cells is rapid and it is independent of insulin. And further metabolism of fructose is different in muscle and extrahepatic tissues, for example, adipose tissue from the metabolism of fructose in liver, kidney and intestine. So let's first see how the fructose is metabolized in muscle and extrahepatic tissues like adipose tissue. So this is a schematic representation of cell. Once fruc fructose enters the cell and the entry is independent of insulin, it is converted into fructose 6-phosphate. Means fructose is phosphorylated to form fructose 6-phosphate by the action of enzyme hexokinase. Now, what is the fate of this fructose 6-phosphate? So, it has various fates like this fructose 6-phosphate can enter glycolysis and it, it is converted into pyruvate because fructose 6-phosphate gets converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and then various steps of glycolysis occurs. So, this is, the one, this is one of the fate of glucose 6-phosphate here. The another fate is this fructose 6-phosphate is converted back to glucose 6-phosphate and this glucose 6-phosphate can go in glycogenesis. So, there can be formation of glycogen from this glucose 6-phosphate. So, this is the second fate or in the fasting and starvation condition, this glucose 6-phosphate can be channeled towards gluconeogenesis. So, these are three uh, fates of fructose 6-phosphate depending upon whether it is well-fed condition or it is a fasting or starvation condition. In well-fed condition, this fructose 6-phosphate will, uh, will be channeled towards glycolysis and glycogenesis while in fasting and starvation, it is channeled towards gluconeogenesis. Now, let's see how this fructose is metabolized in liver, kidney and intestine. This is a schematic representation of liver cell. So, fructose enters in the liver cell or hepatocytes and it is converted into fructose 1-phosphate by the action of enzyme fructokinase. So, fructose is phosphorylated to form fructose 1-phosphate. Here, the phosphate group is donated by this ATP and which is this is converted into ADP. Now, this fructose 1,6-bisphosphate it is acted upon by the enzyme aldolase B. This aldolase B is different from the aldolase A of glycolysis. So, this aldolase B then converts this fructose 1-phosphate into glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So, this, these are the two molecules which are formed from fructose 1-phosphate by the action of enzyme aldolase B. Now, what happens next? This dihydroxyacetone phosphate can be isomerized to form glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by the action of enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. And this is the reaction which is similar to glycolysis. This glyceraldehyde can also be converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by the action of enzyme triokinase. So, ultimately, in the fructose metabolism here in liver, intestine and kidney, there is formation of dihydroxyacetone phosphate as well as glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now, let's continue with the further reactions of fructose metabolism. We get this fructose either from honey or uh, fruits which are rich in fructose or from the sucrose. Sucrose is broken down into fructose and glucose by the action of enzyme sucrase. And ultimately, we get dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate which are intermediates of glycolysis. Now, what happens next? By the action of enzyme aldolase A, this dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate can be converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Now, the fate of this fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, it depends 
on the metabolic state of body whether the body is in fasting condition or starvation or it is in the well fed state so if it is in the well fed state then this fructose 16 bisphosphate is channeled towards formation of pyruvate through glycolysis this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate also can be channeled through the glycolysis and there is formation of pyruvate so this is one of the fate of fructose metabolism in well fed condition that is formation of pyruvate from fructose now if the body is in fasting or starvation then this fructose 16 bisphosphate is channeled towards gluconeogenesis that is synthesis of new glucose and there is formation of fructose 6 phosphate glucose 6 phosphate and finally formation of glucose so this is gluconeogenesis this glucose 6 phosphate can also be derived from phosphorylation of glucose by action of enzyme hexokinase or glucokinase or it can also be derived from glycogen by the action of various enzyme in glycogenolysis and there can be formation of glycogen also from this glucose 6 phosphate so various fates of fructose depends on whether the body is in well fed state or it is in the fasting or starvation the glyceraldehyde which is formed by the action of aldolase b from fructose 1 phosphate it has different fate it is converted into glycerol by action of enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase this glycerol can be phosphorylated to glycerol phosphate by action of enzyme glycerol kinase and this glycerol phosphate can also be derived from dihydroxyacetone phosphate which is formed from glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate by isomerization reaction and further this dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted into glycerol phosphate by glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase now once this glycerol phosphate is formed it is channeled towards formation of phosphoglycerides and triacylglycerol so now we know that in fructose metabolism fructose can be channeled towards formation of pyruvate through glycolysis and in fasting and starvation there can be formation of glucose through gluconeogenesis there can be formation of glycogen as well in well fed state and this glycerol phosphate is channeled towards formation of phosphoglycerides and triacylglycerol now let's see how this fructose metabolism the important steps are different from glycolysis so we know that fructose is converted into fructose 1 phosphate specifically in liver intestine and kidney where aldolase b is present so fructokinase is responsible for phosphorylation of fructose and there is formation of fructose 1 phosphate which is further lysed into glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate by the action of enzyme aldolase b so these are the important reactions of fructose metabolism while in glycolysis through various reactions glucose first converted into glucose 6 phosphate then into fructose 6 phosphate and this fructose 6 phosphate then by the action of enzyme phosphofructokinase it is converted into fructose 16 bisphosphate and this phosphofructokinase is a rate limiting enzyme of glycolysis so formation of fructose 16 bisphosphate it is regulated by this enzyme and this step is important here and further this fructose 16 bisphosphate is converted into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so the enzyme aldolase a it has three forms aldolase a is present in skeletal muscle aldolase b is present in liver kidney and intestine and aldolase c is present in brain now how this reactions of fructose metabolism are different from glycolysis so this rate limiting reaction which is catalyzed by phosphofructokinase it is not present in the fructose metabolism and that's why fructose metabolism is rapid rapid as compared to glycolysis so the rate of fructose metabolism is more rapid than that of glucose because the triose is formed from fructose 1 phosphate bypass phosphofructokinase 1 which is the major rate limiting step in glycolysis so this is how fructose metabolism is different from glycolysis now let's see what are the effects of uncontrolled fructose metabolism means if we consume excess amount of fructose it leads to various harmful effects in the body so when in the diet there is high amount of fructose is taken through sucrose honey or fruits let's see what are the consequences 
so there will be formation of fructose 1 phosphate and as there is formation of more amount of fructose 1 phosphate it leads to formation of increase concentration of pyruvate in the body because we know that one of the fate of fructose metabolism is formation of pyruvate so more fructose meta metabolism more pyruvate formation more pyruvate is converted into acetyl coa so there will be more acetyl coa pool and this acetyl coa is further utilized in the synthesis of free fatty acid triacylglycerol and cholesterol and that's why it further leads to the conditions like hyperlipidemia or fatty liver and that's why excess fructose uptake or intake is associated with hyperlipidemia and fatty liver the next consequence is increased fructose 1 phosphate so there is more formation of fructose 1 phosphate from fructose so more phosphate gets utilized here more amount of inorganic phosphate is utilized so it leads to decrease in organic phosphate in the body and this because of the decrease in organic phosphate there is decrease atp because formation of atp requires in organic phosphate and as the pool is decreased there will be less formation of atp and as there is less formation of uh, atp means uh, less amount of atp in the body the, as a compensation there will be increase amount of amp synthesis that is adenosine monophosphate synthesis and but there is more amount of amp synthesis but to form atp from amp again it requires phosphate so that due to lack of phosphate the there will be degradation of amp occur by amp deaminase so it le further leads to increased degradation of adenosine monophosphate and this degradation result in to increase production of uric acid and it leads to hyperuricemia and hyperuricemia is associated with increased lactic acid because uric acid and lactic acid both compete with each other for excretion and that's why uncontrolled fructose metabolism is associated with hyperuricemia and lactic acidosis and that's why fructose is harmless in diabetes is, is a myth it is not reality fructose is harmful because excess amount of fructose in diabetic patient can lead to increase free fatty acid increase cag and cholesterol synthesis and they are prone to have hyperlipidemia fatty liver hyperuricemia and lactic acidosis and that's why fructose is not a substitute of glucose in diabetes mellitus it is as harmful as glucose now let's see the disorders of fructose metabolism there are two important enzymes in fructose metabolism fructokinase and aldolase b fructokinase is responsible for phosphorylation of fructose to fructose 1 phosphate what will happen if this enzyme is defective so it is called as essential fructose urea if the fructokinase is deficient or defective so this essential fructose urea is due to lack of fructokinase this is autosomal recessive condition it occurs one in 1 lakh 30000 births it is benign condition it does not result in any abnormality in the body only thing is there is excretion of fructose in the urine which can be detected by the benedict test or and selivanov test so essential fructose urea is one of the important disorder associated with fructose metabolism the second disorder associated with fructose metabolism is hereditary fructose intolerance it is also called as hereditary fructosemia and it is due to lack of aldolase b this aldolase b is present in liver kidney and small intestine and it is responsible for conversion of fructose 1 phosphate to glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate this is autosomal recessive condition it occurs in 1 in 20000 births due to this lack of aldolase b there is intracellular trapping of fructose 1 phosphate so it leads to increased concentration of fructose 1 phosphate and it is responsible for various clinical features seen in this condition like severe hypoglycemia vomiting jaundice hemorrhage hepatomegaly renal dysfunction hyperuricemia and lactic acidemia the first symptoms of this condition appear when a baby is weaned from milk and begins to be fed food containing sucrose or fructose diagnosis is done by detection of fructose in urine by benedict as well as selivanov test and also by dna based 
testing the treatment is by rapid detection and removal of fructose and sucrose from diet in the previous slide we have seen how fructose metabolism is associated with increased uric acid and increased lactic acid level because increased fructose one phosphate it is responsible for trapping of inorganic phosphate so it leads to decrease in organic phosphate which in turn decrease atp concentration and as a compensation there is increase amp rise so more amp formation and there will be more amp degradation so it is a more purine synthesis more purine degradation so uric acid is the end product of purine metabolism so there will be increased uric acid concentration that is hyperuricemia this fructose 1 phosphate it inhibits the enzyme fructose fructokinase by feedback inhibition and it leads to increase fructose concentration in blood and that's why the condition is also called as hereditary fructosemia in the next slide we will see why this condition is associated with hypoglycemia in hereditary fructose intolerance there is decrease atp concentration as the inorganic phosphate is trapped in fructose 1 phosphate form and due to decrease in atp there will be decrease rate of gluconeogenesis so this gluconeogenesis will be affected then protein synthesis affected clotting factor synthesis affected and that's a patient also presents with hemorrhage and due to this decreased gluconeogenesis there will be decreased concentration of glucose means decreased formation of glucose and it further leads to the condition that is hypoglycemia in this condition hereditary fructose intolerance the second important cause is this fructose 1 phosphate which is accumulated it is it is a inhibitor of enzyme phosphorylase this enzyme is very important in the process of glycogenolysis that is formation of glucose from glycogen so as this fructose 1 phosphate inhibits the glycogen phosphorylase glycogen cannot be converted into glucose and that's why it leads to decrease glucose concentration that is hypoglycemia this is second important cause of hypoglycemia and the third important cause is this fructose 1 phosphate it releases glucokinase glucokinase is the enzyme which phosphorylates glucose to glucose 6 phosphate it is present in liver so this fructose 1 phosphate it releases this glucokinase from glucokinase regulatory protein normally what happens this glucokinase regulatory protein it is it is bound to the glucokinase in nucleus and whenever there is increased concentration of glucose it is released this glucokinase is released from this regulatory protein and it acts on this glucokinase to form this glucose 6 phosphate from glucose but in the fasting and starvation it is just bound to this glucokinase regulatory protein but now what this glucose 1 phosphate does this glucose 1 phosphate it cause release of this glucokinase from this glucokinase regulatory protein and now once this glucokinase is free it will go and bind act on this glucose to form glucose 6 phosphate and this glucose whatever glucose is there in the hepatocytes it will get trapped inside the hepatocytes so in blood there will be decreased glucose concentration so all these important causes they are responsible for hypoglycemia in hereditary fructose intolerance let's study one case of hereditary fructose intolerance a 5 years old child was brought to the hospital with complaints of nausea vomiting and abdominal pain his mother said that he had skipped regular meals and had been eating only sweets cane sugar and fruits the laboratory investigation showed following results plasma glucose was 45 mg per deciliter means it is decreased patient has hypoglycemia benedict test in urine was positive benedict test is for all reducing sugar means it is shown by all reducing sugar present in the which are excreted in the urine but this selivinov test it differentiates between aldose sugar and keto sugar so it is also positive which means that fructose is excreted in the urine so fructose urea is detected here history of consumption of fructose rich foods along with the hypoglycemia in patient and urine test positive for fructose suggestive of hereditary fructose intolerance due to aldolase b deficiency so i hope this video will be useful to you thank you for watching